Rich versus poor mindset. How to be rich. So, what's the difference between the rich versus the poor mindset? It's all about how you think about and use money. Look at Robert Kiyosaki, whose celebrity net worth estimates as having $80 million. He's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, one of the best-selling personal finance books of all time. In his book, he shares the difference between the rich, middle class, and poor mentalities. Hey, before we get started, please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons to be sure not to miss any of our incredible content in the future. Go ahead and get that done, I'll wait. Okay, let's get into it. So, here's a snapshot of what the book's about. In Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Kiyosaki compares his two dads, his best friend Mike's father, Rich Dad, and his biological father, Poor Dad. His rich dad, who never finished grade 8, is a wealthy entrepreneur and one of the richest men in Hawaii. His poor dad, who is a Stanford PhD, is an employee of the government and has a high income and good benefits, but still struggles to pay the bills. This book discusses about how the difference between these two dads is in their financial literacy, mindset and habits, and how they manage money. Here are the seven differences between the rich versus poor mindset in Rich Dad Poor Dad. What is a rich mindset? 1. The rich don't work for money. While the poor and middle class work for money, the rich make money work for them. Basically, the poor and middle class work a day job to earn a paycheck, whereas the rich are entrepreneurial and capitalize on opportunities. To seize these opportunities and have money work for you, you need to overcome two emotions, fear and greed. The fear is of being without money and worrying about not being able to pay the bills, which makes you continue the same day job, even if it's not meaningful to you. Greed is spending money on all of the luxurious things money can buy. The happiness that comes from these things is often, well, short term. Soon you want more money to buy more things. These two emotions perpetuate this pattern of working to get more money and then increasing your spending, trapping yourself in the rat race. 2. The rich build assets and reduce liabilities. Instead of relying on your job for money, you should focus on building your personal wealth by increasing your assets. Rich people acquire assets, while the poor and middle class acquire liabilities. An asset puts money in your pocket. A liability takes money out of your pocket. Examples of assets are stocks, bonds, income-producing real estate, royalties from intellectual property, and businesses that generate income. An example of a liability is your home. While often perceived as an asset, your home costs you money as you have to pay property taxes, utilities, and other maintenance costs. If you rent out your home and generate cash flow from it, your home would be considered an asset. The author clarifies that he's not saying don't buy a house to live in for yourself. He's saying buy assets that will generate cash flow first to pay for that house you want to live in. Kiyosaki discusses his favorite two assets, real estate and small company stocks that are about to go public on a stock exchange. These are his favorites because he loves buildings and land, and he's an entrepreneur at heart. 3. The rich make money work for them. It's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep. The rich dad is a frugal man who doesn't have a lot of material possessions. While the traditional school system educates you on how to get a job, it doesn't show you how to save money and make it work for you. The cash flow pattern of a poor or middle class person is to spend all of their income on expenses and liabilities, like uh, credit card payments. The cash flow pattern of a rich person is to spend their money on not just expenses and liabilities, but also in building assets. The author discusses how most believe that more money will solve their problems. More money will actually highlight the problem. This is why people who often get lottery winnings soon return to the same financial difficulties they were in before that windfall of cash. 
With this large increase in income, there will be an increase in expenses, as they'll want to have more luxuries, like a bigger and better house. Now their liabilities column is increasing, and they're caught in the rat race. The real loss is the opportunity cost. As their money is tied up, they can't take advantage of opportunities to buy assets that are temporarily discounted. They'll also lose the time the assets would have grown in value. 4. The rich minimize taxes and use the power of corporations. The rich have or use advisors who have financial IQ, the expertise in accounting, investing, understanding markets and the law. They understand how to maneuver the system to protect their assets and minimize their taxes. The number one expense for most people is taxes. The more income you make as an employee, the greater tax you pay. If you are the employer, you have more tax advantages and protections. For example, they understand that a corporation can do things that an employee can't. An employee earns income, gets taxed, and uses the remaining amount for expenses. In contrast, a corporation earns income spend and then gets taxed on the remaining income. They also use their corporation to protect their personal assets against lawsuits. 5. The rich create opportunities and take risks. While the poor and middle class wait for luck and opportunity, the rich recognize and create opportunities and take big risks. The author discusses how there are two types of investors. There is one who buys a packaged investment like a mutual fund through a financial investor. There is another who puts together opportunities and creates a new investment. It is this second type of investor that locates opportunities that everyone else overlooks. This investor knows how to raise capital that doesn't require a bank and work with or hire advisors who are smarter than himself or herself. 6. The rich learn management and communication skills. The skills of management and communication are necessary to learn to achieve financial success. Communication skills, writing, speaking, negotiating, selling, and marketing are particularly important. You can learn these skills through attending courses or working a second or other job that allows you to build on these skill sets. 7. The rich align their habits and emotions. In order to build your assets and use your financial literacy, you need to manage your mental state. Overcome your fear of losing money. Quote, failure inspires winners. Failure defeats losers. Don't be like most and let your doubts and thoughts of gloom and doom paralyze you into inaction. Don't think you're too busy or don't have enough money to build your wealth. If you think you can't afford it, you should ask yourself, how can I afford it? Use exercises like paying yourself first, as the pressure to pay your creditors will be so great that it will motivate you to make more money. Of course, pay your bills as well, but use this exercise as a way to stimulate your financial thinking. Overcome your arrogance and be open-minded to learning more. These are our key takeaways from Rich Dad Poor Dad. We highly recommend it as a must-read for anyone wishing to build wealth the old-fashioned way. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you feel like you received some real value and insight from this content, please take a moment to hit the like and the subscribe buttons so as not to miss any of our new video releases. We upload new videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Until next time, we remain Business Brain USA.